This is generally what you heard. That's about as good as it got. <laughs> Welcome to your favorite American goulash channel on YouTube. If you're new here, then my name is CK. This is the second episode of of the first episode. This is Random Beers, aka European Tries Out American Beers. This is not my typical vlog because this is um let's call it a vodcast vodcast uh, which is like a video podcast so if you like this kind of content um content then i might put up some more but for now just watch this one Welcome back to Fear of a Goulash. <laughs> you just mixed those up? I did. I like it. Nice. Fear of the goulash. I, can, can we get into goulash for a minute? Yeah. Isn't that just some... I mean, I'm sure it's something legitimate in Europe, but over here it's just like noodles and stuff thrown in it. Okay, now if you Google goulash, right, um, you will be... Actually, you will get scared. Because goulash... <laughs> let me pull it up, because... Cause, I, I, I like it. Okay. I, I want your reaction. I like reactions. I, I'm in. Uh, I know there's a lot of things American, we Americanize. Even yes. Chinese food we Americanize. Like when you see what real, I know it's beyond the verse. There's no just Chinese food, but I okay, mean, so I already Chinese have food. this in, in one of my vlogs. Oh, nice. Um, according oh, to the urban. Can, before you do, can you plug your vlog real fast? What's the name of your vlog again? Or it's, VOD? Or? It's American Goulash, but thank you. I will upload this. To American Goulash, I guess. Oh, I know, but I'm, so are my friends. Yeah, my yeah. my vlog is the same channel. It's American Goulash. It's kind of different because I'm rec recording more B-rolls and more more video stuff. But this, I hope you like this, and I hope you like those. So make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna give it a plug. I watched it today, the first one, uh, Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe. And I legitimately liked it because you tried to turn it off. And I was like, no, 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 turn that back on. <laughs> I mean, I, it, it's really Thank entertaining. <laughs> it really is. It's really entertaining to watch. So according to the uh, Urban Dictionary or in, on the internet. Hit it. Uh, goulash is a sexual practice involving the insertion of human excrement into the anal cavity of another person. An example, <laughs> didn't you hear, we are not speaking. She wanted to perform goulash on me. <laughs> now, your mom was worried uh, about beer. I'm a, <laughs> like, I'm not sure I'm Hungarian, and goulash is actually the the national food of of Hungary. Right. We are we have we are doing goulash cookouts, and the whole family is there, and it's 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 like it's like a good party, good time and stuff. And I went up on the internet to see to to get like a normal normal explanation for for Americans and for my English viewers, and I'm getting this. <laughs> I can't believe that's the first thing that came up. Not the food, nothing to do with that. Man, right oh. to the sexual stuff. It's, ah, it's so actually good. like a soup or a stew. You're like cooking it for three hours. Oh, uh, so good. Basically like on fire or, or... You can do it like an open pit kind of thing? Yeah, some, something like kettle. that. Or a campfire. And, yeah. and if you go up to, to the American goulash, well that's just something... Uh, macaroni and yeah that's what i would have that's what i think of as goulash right so i didn't knew this before before I, I started my american goulash channel i just wanted to do something like okay i live in america i'm vlogging about america so it's gonna be american and i would take something that's that's, that's hungarian and we know it's hungarian and i just put it together and i don't want to do something like okay American tour rudy because you have no idea what's a tour rudy. Right. <laughs> no, I was so I, I I picked something that is familiar with, with Americans as well. And right. I, I went with American goulash without Googling it. Right. So this is how I ended up here. I like it. I would love to taste real goulash. Actually in uh, this weekend's vlog I will put in I mean it's gonna be three weekends ago vlog. Uh, I had a goulash party with my family. It's, it's been like 25 people and we did like a, a big pot of goulash and it was amazing. So it's akin to the Italian spaghetti and meatballs and kind of big family dinner kind of food. Yeah, it's the same, right. but, but just but just Hungarians have this, this food culture too right. that are really proud of. And, uh, 
and like fish soups, uh, goulash, uh, chimney cakes. Uh, Hold on, we got. Ooh, I gotta know what that is. I gotta know. I used to work on a food show, so I gotta know what that is. The, it's called Kurtos Kolach in Hungarian. How many languages uh, do you speak again? Uh, three to four. Oh, we talked about this off air today. A Americans generally speak one language. You know what that is? Uh, uh, uh English. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't mean foreigners in any kind of you know, people who come from outside the country. I see anywhere else in the world, there are at least two languages, maybe three. So imagine this, like um, donut, donut. Uh, okay, like donut cake, kind of right. Donut dough. Uh, rolled up on on like a uh, wood, and this is made on like normal. Oh, look at the like, picture! It's, it's fired. <sighs> they kick it on. They they grill it on a fire. So the inside is the outside is crunchy and the inside is soft, and there's sugar on it. So the sugar melts, and you can do do stuff like chocolate or or I seen a there was a picture like Nutella inside or ice cream oh. or or ice cream cone chimney cake, and it's like. Oh, that was a fire. You get all that smokiness in there, too. Oh, that sounds so good. I have to do that, dude. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's an expensive food because you don't have those rolling stuff that right. you need. But I'll find, I'll find a way to prepare it. Is there a place in this country where you can eat that? There's got to be a Hungarian restaurant there somewhere, are, right? There are hundreds, there are hundreds of Hungarian Romanian uh, restaurants, but I... Since I live here for six years now, I never heard that somebody's making chimney cake. Even even in those restaurants, they're not making it. N even those. Why? But Why? I went up in Canada. Like last year, I was in Canada, and the first stop in Toronto, there was like a, a food truck, and oh. they were making like chimney cake ice cream cones with ice cream in it. And I was like, Why can't we just? I, I I need to start a business like this. That's what I'm saying. That's how a business starts. A, a, there's a need for it. You think people will love it. Look, look what happened in New York. The Krona, uh, what was that? The Krona? The croissant donut? Okay. That some genius just figured out you could take a croissant, turn it into a donut, and there were lines around the block. All right, so um, if you have extra money and you're watching this uh, uh, <laughs> vlogcast and um, you want to invest in, uh, in our idea, um, please invest in, uh, give, give it, I it, like the chip. That sounds American. I know you're calling it. It, it probably has a Hungarian Romanian name. Yeah, it's Kurtos Kolaj, but chimney cake sounds chimney American. Cake. People would eat that. And if you want to invest in in a in a alcohol license as well, so we can sell some some good beers there, <laughs> sold. Just contact me. Oh, or, we we have another beer. Oh, we have a couple more beers. So let's All drink right, something. Let's do this thing. There are actually pyramids are growing on my tongue because. I'm getting, it's getting... By the way, that's what happens on our show. We have beers, but we talk about goulash <laughs> or whatever else we're talking about. And then the beers are like, oh, we should drink a beer. I like it, but for now, I have no, I I, th I just told him, I told James that we, we're going to record like 40 minutes and I will, I will cut this to like 15. Right. But, oh my God. I have no idea how to edit this, this up to 15 minutes because I don't want to cut out these, these it, moments. It could be 20. <laughs> yeah. Now on our show, we would record 40 minutes and it would be 40 minutes, but well, to our detriment, we don't edit. We rarely okay. edit unless we have what's called an NFA, not for air. Like somebody says something about their company they're not supposed to, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, it, we'll leave it in. I think I told you off air. We one time left in 10 minutes of us talking to the janitor at a restaurant we were at while he was trying to vacuum across the room. And we were like, Hey, we got a podcast going on over here. He's off mic. I gotta talk to it. They were interested when you said. left it in. Left it in. How are your pouring skills, kind sir? Well, let me see. All right, I'm gonna let you try here. All here. You got? You wanna do both? Oh, look at that. He's holding it and pouring it. That's skill. Oh God, you need to be on a beer podcast. Look at that. Now that's how beer's supposed to be poured. And then let's get the nice look of mine. <laughs> you know, and mine's had five, six seconds to lose some head. It was like that, easily. Good job. You want to pour it up? That'll be for our guests later. Sure, yeah. Okay, so what do you, what is this beer? Oh, we should tell everybody what the beer is. Well, these are our nice friends at River Horse. River Horse is a fantastic brewery. And it's, my name is Citrus Maximus IPA, a white grapefruit and passion fruit India pale ale. 
great movie. Now let's see if the beer is as great as the movie. Oh, and you can't forget the hippo. There's a hippo on the can. You know, I think beer, this is going to be weird. I'm going to get us into a music discussion for a minute. Okay. I think beer cans are the new record album covers. Because even though record albums are making kind of a comeback yeah. on some level, but I think our statistic is 8% of what they were when they died in 87. About 8% of that market's come back because all the new hipsters are not actually making records as opposed now to CDs. Yeah. Um, we're going to get back to this uh, even the, with our fifth beer. Right. But the, oh, we're getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the artwork on the cans is what's so cool. Yeah, that's how I picked up, like, I think five of them or four of them. It's just because of the artwork. Right. You're you're 26, so you don't remember this per se, but I'm 45, so I remember going into dusty music stores and looking at crates of vinyl and picking one up and looking at the album cover and going, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to buy it. Because that's you, how cool you, the artwork was. You just said it's a, it's a hipster thing nowadays. Yes. But whenever you're listening to a vinyl, it's just the song, just the music is better. It's quality. Oh, it's... So I have a couple of vinyls at home. There's nothing better than vinyl. Yep. I don't care what anybody tells you, the best digital you can come out with yeah, is was. not as good as actual vinyl. Yeah, it's, it's, it's expensive, but well, it's, good. it's better. Oh, it's better. Now let's see what... Do you think that's a, that's a Gladiator Hippo or a Gladiator Hippo? Do I think the, uh, the, uh, the uh, alcohol is up there? I don't... 9.5? 4.9. Oh, we can drink this. Almost. <laughs> 5%, we're not bad. That's drinkable. Yeah, cheers. Oh, look, it's finally down to regular beer, people. It's got a little tang at the bottom there. Yeah, if, 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 you're, if you're looking for the citrusy part, probably this is... This should have been the first one. Right. And then the, the real first one comes next. And then the third one is the third. I like the second one is the third one because that was the sour sour. Oh, what order pick the beer is the worst game ever. We always do that. We try to go light the dark on the show. Mm -hmm. We don't always, but problem going light the dark is your light ones tend to be your four or five percenters, and then your dark ones, your stouts, sometimes come in it. Oh, I drink uh, Neshaminy Creek's Leon Stout Imperial Stout. That's eleven point six percent. Wow. So if you've drank six beers in a day and your seventh beer is an eleven point six. <laughs> There's a brewery, uh, Liquid Hero, in uh, in York, and they are doing a, a beer called the Dictator, oh. and that's eleven point six two. Yeah, that's up there. Uh, I was I wasn't drinking for a while, and I went out empty stomach. I had a Dictator because oh. it just it just sound, sounds good, Dictator. Right. <laughs> well, that's the and, problem. And they came out. It was like. The beer was as dark as my soul, or not my soul, but somebody <laughs> No, else. I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I had that beer, it was St. Paddy's Day, and um, I thought I would drink a lot more beers after that. Well, I kind of stopped. I had right. like one more Bud Light and that's it. That's for the whole day. Right, our, our housemaster here, her and I drank a couple of those 11.6 beers one night. And we were like, wow, I don't think we're getting off the couch. I think we're just gonna sit here. We were supposed to go do something, we're like, nah. Nah, 11.6 dictated on the couch. <laughs> it just does that and it sneaks up on you. You don't realize yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, even if it's a, a bit sweeter, it's just, it's, you can feel it. And it just goes in and. Right. You're out. That's a, I, I love that in a beer. I like a beer that's high alcohol because I don't drink a lot of beers. So I can only drink three tops if I'm drinking real full size beers. And then my stomach bloats. Mm hmm. So for me, a nine or eleven percenter, that's perfect. Perfect. Probably one of those beers was uh, back in the day when the kids were drinking the beer. Probably the alcohol percentage was the same in those. Oh yeah. So the, the, they were not making light beers. No. It was like it was beer. It was just a really slight step down from a from a Jägermeister or like. Right. Okay, it's not the same taste, not the same procedure, but like. Echo percentage wise, it's just some beers were somewhere next to wines, let's say. Right. Do you like, um, here's my thing if I'm gonna drink a high alcohol beer, it can't taste boozy. That's what bothers me. When it starts to have that, like, too much of that brandy sort of vibe mm -hmm. to it. Like, uh, I like barley wines, but some of those barley wines are 13%. <laughs> you know what we're gonna, gonna do next time? What's that? Just to make my mom happier. Um, you have to come up. You don't like to drink uh, liquors, right? Liquors. No, I 
do. I'm just not a great drinker. Can we do like a vlogcast with half shots and some European half shots? Yes. Because I have like Beharov gun, Unicum, and these are like made of these. These are health for your health. It's that's that's what that's that's what grandmas are saying. If you're going there, like let's say on a holiday or something, yeah, and you have to drink a shot because it's, it's just for your health. It's vitamin. Right. So uh, that sounds brilliant. These are even even Jägermeister is made like made out of 42 eight, no 40 oh I can't do 42 herbs. There's three drinks I can't drink in this world. I can't drink tequila. Okay. I can't drink Jägermeister and I can't drink Goldschlager. All three of those have I mean practically alcohol poisoning drunk stories to go along with them. Yes, I know. I, when I had tequila with a, my a buddy on our show, Rob, who's on our show, it was uh, in our apartment. We drank a bottle and a half of tequila, and he can drink. I can't. So I ended up on, we lived on 2nd Street in Philly. I ended up on the sidewalk against our apartment. That's where I slept and woke up the next morning. On the sidewalk in Philly next to our apartment or against our own apartment. I kinda I kinda have the same same story. Uh I really really like this uh, this Romanian slash Hungarian uh liquor. It's uh it's called Palinka. And uh it's made of uh, of like plum. It's a plum oh, that moonshine. Sounds, that sounds good actually. It sounds good and I really liked it but I liked it too much and after like a <laughs> a couple couple a couple glasses it was all right, I'm not telling how how many how many glasses were, but I woke up with the bucket on my head, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what that's when my my Hungarian moonshine drinking career stopped. Right. Because after that, I just I just can't. I know, yeah. I, I can't. You 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 and me both seem like we both did our best drinking in our very early twenties. Yeah. And then after that, I became a super social drinker at best. I just can't. <laughs> I drink hard. I can't drink. I can't get that bombed anymore. That hangover now. Look, I'm 45. Mm -hmm. Your hangover stinks. My hangover almost feels like it's time to go to the emergency room. <laughs> it's like I, I think I'm dead. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually. I'm not drinking anymore because I don't want to be hangover the next day. Because that fucking kills my productivity the next day. Did you hear that, mom? He's not drinking anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even even if. When back in the day when I was in my twenties, we went out, but we actually gave the foundation to the party at home. We had like liquor, and we started drinking at eleven o'clock or ten o'clock in the morning. Because like parties are not in, in here in the U.S. It's, it doesn't stop. Like what, there there were there were clubs when where you could party till the night till the late, last guest was there. Wow! If you were the last guest, then is it mine? Yep. So uh, no, it's no. mine actually. Yep. So you had the after hours club mentality, essentially. That's in America what they call those after hours clubs. After two you can still party. Yeah, but that's what's just a normal club. Oh, that's brilliant. So it's it's connected. Let's say it's a pre pre and after club after hour club combined. Because you go you go there at six o'clock PM and you can party there till twelve o'clock AM. Twelve o'clock PM, sorry. Oh, that's awesome. Like all night. And you come out, you drink a coffee, you sleep, and you go back. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So yeah, when we went there, we, we started like the foundation to drink at 11 p.m. And we got to the party at whatever, 12, 30. And uh, that's how I dance, because I can, I, I'm anxious in this situation I cannot just dance I can. but I'm more like a social drinker like, like I, I go out and I want that communication like a, a bar like go out in a bar and to talk to someone I don't like to dance anymore or something like that just, right just communication and and building a building friendships well that was my my question are these both bars and dance clubs no these are like hard just, dance clubs <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> right and you, you're like Hey, what's your name? Because it's like, yeah, I'm blonde or something like we. That I down here there used to be one called Studio Six. It's gone now. So it was essentially like a gay bar till 2 a.m. and then from 3 till I don't know when I don't know when they closed, 2 in the afternoon or something. You know, it was an after-hours club. 
And the first time I took my ex Christina there, uh, we were, there was a line of people. And coming out of the, they're throwing a guy out. And it's this guy, he's gotta be 250 pounds. And he's a dude in a red dress, hairy legs, red heels, and a beard and no wig. And he's kicking and screaming on his way out. And she turns to me and goes, what kind of fucking place did you take me? Like, what is wrong? What, what are we doing here? It's honey, it's an after not, after not, after not her club. <laughs> follow me. Yeah, just follow me in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow me and you'll be fine. No, oh, he's, he's a regular. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> But so that's bigger over there. There are a lot of those over there. That's not a that's uncommon around here to be able to have a place that you can stay till after two. And when he says when he says here, uh, actually we are in New Jersey, Atlantic City, next to Atlantic City, and uh, that's where our next beer is from. Yes, Cape May Brewing, which is in Cape May, New Jersey, right down the road from Atlantic City. It is called Corrosion, a twist on the IPA, and what they mean is it is a kettle soured IPA. Uh, I haven't had this, but everybody I know who says, I'm not the biggest IPA guy, and I love sours, they're like, this is the IPA for you. Now, I like the hazy ones, and I've, gr I've grown a taste for IPAs. A bit stronger than our previous beers is 6.5%. Oh, you saw that, okay, good. All right, let's see what we got here, you ready? Same colors as this previous one? Eh, yeah, it's a slight, I can almost see through it. Not much, though. Interesting nose. Yep. I get both fruit and funk. Hmm. I'm doing it. Oh, see, that's a sour for you, I feel. I like it. That's a touch of sour. I like it. Yeah. It's actually like a... What do you think? It's it's like a, a lemonade made with seltzer water with a kick of a, of a dryness, like a... Yeah, uh, dry, dry summer wine just for the alcohol. Right, there's not a giant finish. It's all in the front. Yeah, it's just you get it all up front, which I love. It's crisp, which I love. What I like is, oh, see there again. I gotta quote my buddy Jay. The art is in the balance. I get some malt in there, sweetness from the malt. I get a hint of that kettle sourness, and you definitely get some hops. Not crazy West Coast hot tea, hot bomb yeah. kind of hops, but you definitely get the bite. I'd love to know what hops are using in this. this not is that good. I'm a, this not is that, good. I like it. Yeah, it's good. I can I can imagine myself sitting on the on the beach on a sunny day and drinking drinking this. I would pick this before I would pick the the first three one. Right. I would drink that hazy IPA though with a meal. Mm -hmm. This I would set out on my porch and drink. Mm -hmm. I th I've honestly never had a and they're not our sponsor or anything. So this is just a completely you know. Fun plug. Yeah. I've never ever had a bad beer by Cape May Brewing Company. Yeah, never. These are these are just comprehensive reviews and uh, and we were just telling our opinions. So nobody yep. paid this, this. Nope. And it's just a throwing it out there. It's really true. They make. A, I know you're not the biggest sour guy in the world, but they have a lot of sours. They're just stellar. Their IPAs, stellar. Like again, I don't drink a lot of IPAs. The IPA I drink the most is probably by these people. Tonewood. I see, I see your, your eyes shining when you're talking about sour, sour IPs and sour oh, beer. I love them. I do. I, you know what it is? They remind me of wine. Of all the things in beer, as soon as the first time I had a sour, I went, <clears throat> this kind of has a mouthfeel of wine. It, it drinks like wine to me. It's. I've never had a sour that's very carbonated, mm -hmm. so it's really a, I find it a flat's the wrong word. But I also learned that wet is not a word you use when you're describing beer. Or wine, you know, you have dry wines, but you don't have wet wines or wet beers. I pulled that on the show. They're like, "But that's a wet beer." I'm like, "Opposite of dry?" They're like, uh, no. <laughs> "You can you can make somebody wet with a dry wine." Yes, you can do that. One hundred percent. Two glasses, maybe three. So my uh, my family kind of has a three hundred year old uh, recipe for for a wine. And um, we're making it. Uh, you, you, do you know what's a black currant? Yeah. So we're making it uh, with black currant, and it's sweet, and it's it's dark, and oh. it's a uh, it's a real sexy time uh, blood drink. And um, I kind of want to bring it bring it here in the, in the United States. Now, to to find currants in in the United States is kind of they kind of say it's illegal, but um, really. 
Yeah, because there is a fungus that grows on it and it can it can go to to it grows faster on on like uh, currents and then it just spreads. Is it kind so, of fungus you put in your mouth and next thing you know you're looking at dancing bears and not that kind probably, of fungus? Probably, never, never tried. <laughs> right. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say that that's that's a sweet wine and yeah. I started started the wine experiences with my mom's sweet wine and uh, so you've uh, made this before. It's been done. Your family's made this before. Yeah, Any of the recipe, yeah, you yeah. actually made it it's, in. It's a lot. It's a three hundred year old recipe. So oh, that's we awesome. we have it in my family. And uh, I wasn't a big sour or dry wine drinker. But I, I guess as I'm getting older, I like dry more and more and more, especially because of my roommates. Right. And that's why I'm 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 picking this over over the. You ever had like a sweet beer? No, because there's sour, sure. sour beer a lot. Yeah, what? I've never had a. No, I can't think of a beer that would be that. Well, yes, no, I, sh I take that back. There's been a phenomenon going on, and we joke on the show. It's called flavor bombing, where everybody and their mother's trying to make a beer that that tastes like a French toast, or you know, it's ludicrous. You know, if you're drinking beer and it tastes like French toast, that's a problem. <laughs> you know, now my buddies at uh, the Chamonix Creek Brewing Company over there in Pennsylvania, right mm -hmm. in Croydon. They make a beer you saw it out there called Leon Imperial Stout. And how do you drink that? Like a uh, shot of maple syrup on the side? Well, that's it. We'll come back to that. That's another. There's a beer with that, though. Co, we'll come back to that. It's still in the balance. They make it with the house made fluff. They make their own marshmallow fluff. They source out great graham crackers and really good chocolate. Okay. And it's not, again, it's not a flavor bomb. It's just, it's in the mash. So when you drink it, it's subtle notes in the back of your mouth. Like good wine or any good beer. It's in the balance, right? Yep. There's another beer out there, I don't know who makes it, but it says s'mores right on the beer. I drank that and it tasted like s'mores. That's I, disgusting. I that. No offense to that beer, I'm sure they tried real hard and usually we don't trash a beer, but you know, it's not it's like wine. You know, when you get the, when you hear people talk about wine, they say, oh, it's got hints of leather and uh, cherries and uh, whatever they say, sour grass or all the weird <laughs> stuff that you talk about in wine. That's a subtle taste in your mouth. You know, it's not that, <clears throat> you know, smack in the face kind of flavor, that's what good beers do. <laughs> I tell people about that Leon Imperial Stout and they're like, I don't want a s'mores beer. I'm like, it's not a s'mores beer. In fact, if I had it the first time I had it, the joke, not the joke, the truth is, the first beer I fell in love with was Leon. I had it at a bar almost a month after we started the show, third or fourth podcast, uh -huh. I was at a bar and I drank it. At that point, it was already seven months old in the keg. I didn't get any of the fluff. That all had dissipated. It was just, an amazing imperial stout. Are you guys always recording in like bars? No, everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere and How do you deal with the acoustics? It stinks. There's, um, I played you earlier a little image off yeah. my phone. You didn't notice it was the one with all the echoey stuff. Okay. That was from our friend Felicia. We were at Monk's Cafe. This is me being a dope, not thinking, being tired. There was a loud air conditioner on, probably as far as, you know, 10 feet away from us. Mm -hmm. And it was just all over the recording. You deal with it. And when you when you went out the door, when you left the place, what did you say to your friend? Oh, about the air conditioner? No. Oh, just what? to just to, to say goodbye. What do I say goodbye when I? What do you mean? When you left when you left the place from your friend, you turned back and you said, "Bye, Felicia." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How did I not get that? Thanks. I just brought. I. Uh, it's funny you say that. Bad acoustics. Mm -hmm. We did the AC Beer Fest this year, so we had Podcast Row. And I've been here last year on the AC Beer Fest. Right, so this year, oh yeah, I was there last year too. So we weren't set up there last year. So this year there was actually a podcast row all the way in the back corner. Mm -hmm. um, so imagine you've been to the convention center now. Yep. It's a giant place, right? But right behind us, the refrigerator trucks. <laughs> Maybe 100 feet away, loud rock and roll bands. Right next to podcast row, the strippers and the DJ. So we had <laughs> right next to us, loud heavy metal band, 100 to 200 feet away, and refrigerator trucks behind us. Now, I I had two other podcasts I produced that were there, so I had to deal with their audio and ours. Wow. And all the audio mostly sounded like this. And I, I did everything you do to make it sound better. I don't want to be too geeky, but filters and everything I can to try and get as much noise out as I could. This is generally what you heard. Hey! 
That's about as good as it got. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was so loud that the levels on the, you know, before everything was peaking out as loud as it would go, were happening without saying anything. That's how loud it was in there with the crowd, the thing, the stuff. Now, the blessing is, you're talking about losing stuff, I lost our entire Saturday to my computer crashing. So Friday we got audio, we actually had Thursday night audio. Friday we had audio, goose egg from Saturday, probably five or six of the best interviews we've ever done. Big heavyweights in the business, <laughs> gone down the toilet. At least you had fun, right? Oh, too much fun. Oh, I'm gonna circle back like we joke on the show. You said about maple syrup. Yep. That beer we were talking about today, off air. There's a beer that I'm in love with and Miss Natalie from Founders is the one who, uh, who was giving me so much of it when I was at AC Beer Fest. I probably drank my weight in a beer called CBS. Now, if anybody's familiar with, with Founders, and Natalie, if I'm getting this wrong, you can shoot me. Uh, <laughs> they make a delicious breakfast stout. And then they make the Kentucky breakfast stout, which is the one they age in the bourbon barrels. So one is the CBS and one is the KBS. Is, KBS is the one you see once a year. CBS comes out once every few years, I think, two or mm -hmm. three. And that's got a maple syrup in it. Mm -hmm. Now again, see we're talking about if it tasted to me like maple syrup, I would say that's disgusting. You know what I'm gonna do? I'll go back to Pennsylvania and uh, I will dig for this beer. Like, I, I will look it up. I, it's one of my five favorite beers of all time. And I will go home, I'll put it in my fridge, and on a really sunny day, I'll go to next to the pool, I'll open up the beer, take a picture, and I'll send it to you. I will lose my mind. <laughs> My, my friend Ryan, who works at Tonewood, was the first person who ever gave it to me. At a, we had a podcast one day, right? It, it's a change your life beer. It really is. It's like a, it's a great beer. And he dropped it on me for, I don't want to get too much into it, but eight months ago or nine months ago or whatever, almost a year, I blew a hole in my colon. I was really sick. So we, it was just about when I was coming back. You know, when I, and I was podcasting the whole time and drinking and making fun of it and telling poop stories and whatever. So I just had finished my surgery up and he brought a bottle of this to the podcast. Now, I never had it. I didn't know much about it. I knew it was relatively rare because KBS only comes out once a year. Mm -hmm. But our podcast was not going well. It just wasn't. It was mm -hmm. an abomination, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I don't know why, it just wasn't for the first 20, 30, 40 minutes. And then he had handed me all these beers and I looked at him and I'm like, you think you should pull out the... He's like, yeah. Now, I, again, don't know much about this beer, how rare it is. I brought it into the podcast, and the second half of that podcast, or second two thirds, was amazing. <laughs> it was like I poured it in my glass, and when all of a sudden the whole mood of the podcast changed. If you like stouts oh, already, oh, oh. it's oh, a no. stout, just like Leon, it's a stout. There's a lot of stouts I love, but there's something magical about CVS. It's just magical. I like how you talk about the beers. Thanks. That's, that's passion. Like I'm actually, my, my joke, my nickname is the Passionate Amateur. That's what I consider myself now as a beer guy. I'm maybe where you are. You know, we both know enough about styles to know what we like, but we're not sitting here going, well, gross, what they do is in the mash, they got the thing and they boil it. I don't know any of that crap. I don't know how they make it. I barely know what the mash is when I used it for the Leon reference. I, I don't know much about the process at all, but I do know how to drink it. And that goes back to wine. I had a wine guy teach me that. Yeah, like this This is this is why I, I kind of, I'm pretty sure this is why I'm gonna like your, your podcast. Because I don't wanna hear people talking about the technical stuff like, okay, you know, 40, 45 Celsius degrees and then, uh, okay, we're gonna step three meters from, or three feet from the from the border, whatever. I don't care, just give me your opinion and put put some, some good jokes in it and I will laugh with you and I'm, I, feel, I feel like, okay, I know this person because he's talking on my fucking language. The Best day, you're absolutely right. I and mean, you mentioned your podcast, and I asked you that. How do you do your, your other podcast? And you basically said it's people sitting down and friends, and it's, you know, you'd sit and talk about events or things, yeah. or you have a couple topics, but there's no real form or there's no real, um, it's not the same thing every week. You guys can talk about whatever you want, right? Yeah, like I have, I have like a Hungarian podcast, and uh, I'm doing it like the, like the same with video, and, and I have the microphone in front of us, and we just basically what we do. and. This is why my, my mom got, got angry, because, <laughs> because we do this every Friday, I come home from work, I sit down, we take out two beers, and we just 
start start talking like every single guy like if you're a man younger younger man you go out on Friday with your buddies after work happy hours and you just drink one or two beers and you you, you, you just start talking and that's what we do we just record it that's what we do and I kind of started posting it but probably my mom's girlfriends are not realizing that I'm posting that every week one so they're just they're, they were like Oh, your son is drinking all the time. <laughs> okay, all right. If you really listen to this or if you really watch this video, I really appreciate it. Of course, there's gonna be like a like a third episode of this. I'll post that tomorrow. Come back to my channel, and if you just wanna just wanna get the notification, then make sure that besides the subscribe button, you will freaking punch that little bell. Because that's the only thing that even matters. But yeah, if you want to leave me a feedback, then go down and under the description and all the other videos and everything, there is like a comment section. You can always put your feedback there. Let's start a community here. I promise you, I will respond to your positive, positive feedbacks. Let's not forget about my old goodbye. If you like this video, Make sure you leave a like button in the comment section below. Bye bye. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Before you leave me that like, I'll link James Rabeck's uh, podcast in the in the description. If you guys want to hear more topics around the beer and some good stories, then make sure you go over to to his real podcast channel and um, just give them some love. Thank you. So. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.